I've a fear of tunnels. It didn't bother me until I started cycling on the Waterford Greenway and came to the Ballyvoyle Tunnel. It's the stuff of nightmares. For months I avoided it until finally I decided to confront my fear. When I saw the tunnel's mouth, my hand went to the brake, but I didn't pull it. I kept my eyes on the light at the end of the tunnel and entered my fear. Halfway through, I saw a young girl, head to toe in black. There was a peculiar, bemused expression on her face. She gave me a little wave and I returned the gesture, nearly falling off my bike as I did. When I reached the end, there was a little smile on my face at the anticipation of the sun's warmth. A glorious moment came when the sun did hit my face before the sun's heat was replaced with the cold, damp surround of stone and moss. And I was once again at the beginning of the tunnel. I skidded to a stop. This time I did fall off my bike with my right hand side taking most of the fall. I got to my feet. Stars danced in front of my eyes. I retrieved my flask from the holder and took a drink of water. I must have hit my head. I must have fallen the first time and imagined cycling out. There was simply no other explanation. I turned my bike around, aiming it towards freedom. The young girl had moved to the tunnel's mouth. You won't be able to leave now. You're stuck here. The young girl said as I cycled past. My skin bathed in light before I arrived back at the exit with my bike pointing towards the entrance. The girl was there next to me, smirking. I told you she said. I ignored her and turned around. The sun blared in the sky, calling me to freedom. I walked to it. Again, I felt its heat on my skin until I was pulled back, this time arriving at the entrance. Oh, silly thing, she said. You'll never be free. There was no pain in my head, but still my hand searched for a wound. Nothing. A hallucination then, brought on by fear. I took a deep breath and attempted to leave. Again I ended up on the other side, all the while the child watched me with that bemused expression on her face. I repeated this over and over until there was little light on either side of me with the setting sun. Now do you believe me? The child said. What's happening? I asked. Am I dead? No, you're not dead, she said sweetly, and I'll happily tell you the way out. That's if you want to know. Of course I want to know, I said. But if I told you, you'd have to trade places with me in a year's time. Trade places with you? I squeezed my handlebars. It had been hours since I'd eaten anything. And I was lightheaded to the point I thought I'd pass out. Fine, I said. I'll trade places with you. Follow me, she said. I did, following her into the day. Out in the open there was no sign of her, nor could I see her when I looked behind. I didn't concern myself. I got back on my bike and cycled home as fast as I could. One year has passed since that incident. I didn't tell anyone about it. There was no need. As it occurred to me in the tunnel that fear had damaged my mind, the same rang true afterwards. Although I had never hallucinated before, anxiety had caused me to believe falsities were the truth over the years. Not once did I cycle through the tunnel. What I did was park the bike for good and get a car. The car was in the driveway that day when I went out for a walk. It didn't even occur to me it was a year since the incident until I saw her standing there, still in her dark clothes with the same bemused expression on her face. I've kept my end of the deal, she said. Now it's time you kept yours. That was all the warning I got before I arrived in the Ballyvoyle Tunnel. No bike now. Nothing to support me as I walked up and down searching for a way out. No one for company, not even that strange child. Sometimes I can hear people's voices as they pass. But I never see them. I've never seen anyone until you, with your big, nervous eyes, appeared at the entrance. I wave as you pass me. Hello, you say. You pick up your pace. My presence stirs your anxiety. When the tunnel keeps pulling you in, I stroll over to you. Do you want to know the way out? I'll show it to you, if you'll make a deal.